Hi, my name is Kevin Thomas, W1DED. Today I have with me a past guest, Mike Giannaccio, W5REZ. At the time, Mike was at the very early stages of starting a brand new ham radio antenna company that he called Res Antennas. Since then, and just recently, I saw that DX Engineering is carrying his product line, so I thought it was time for a check-in with Mike. Mike, thanks for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me, Kevin. Uh, Always a pleasure. Glad to be here. Well, I've got to tell you, it's very exciting to see your success. I thought I had an inside peek there at the beginning, and I know you put a lot of effort into a really high-quality production plan, and just to see you going to market aggressively is... is, uh, is fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks a lot. You know, it's been a kind of a long road. It takes a while to get these things, um, you know, all together the way you want it and uh, get it on the market. But uh, we're there. And, you know, I got to say thanks to, to DX Engineering. And also uh, over in the UK, we're at uh, Moonraker now. So um, those two companies have been really great partners. But uh I got to thank DX Engineering for being the first to to pick me up. And uh, people over there are just excellent. Can't say enough good things about them. I mean, I've just been just really impressed. Yeah, I've had Tim Duffy, K3LR, on the show a couple of times. And he's always impressed me as somebody who really understands ham radio and all the various niches. But I've also conducted a lot of business with DX Engineering. And uh, I, they're, they're my go-to at this point. I know that I'm going to get something reliably quickly. And also, they've got great technical support, and I've relied upon that uh, that technical port support on several occasions. So, let's go back to the beginning because I'm just a little bit curious about this. I know you were selling direct initially. Was it always your plan to go through uh, a third party like DX Engineering and Moonraker? Yeah, that was that was part of the business plan uh, out of the gate was to launch kind of on our own at first, and then um, show kind of have some sort of track record, you know, to show some sort of sales and, and need for it. And then, uh, just start pitching it to, uh, to, uh, different retailers to see who might be interested in it. And, uh, DX engineering was one of the first ones I reached out to and they got back to me in maybe 15 minutes and they said, yeah, we think we do. Let's, we think we want to carry that. Let's have a meeting. And, um, that's pretty much how that went. Um, you know, I just waited until I got to the point where I, I felt like I had a, a good enough footing to show, you know, that the product was legitimate and, uh, was able to send them a sample unit. They bought one from me and did the, conducted their own testing on it and, uh, everything, you know, went as it should have. And, um, that was it. Then they placed an order and we got busy on that. And we delivered that first order uh, probably about a month ago. Yeah, just about a month ago. So it's been uh, in stock for about a month there on DX Engineering. Having been in distribution myself, I know getting started is not always an easy process. It's hard to estimate how many uh, of the various products that you put in place. Was that a difficult process for you or, or did you hit the numbers right, right out of the gate? It was hard. We, uh, we started out, I did my first ham fest in, uh, I guess it was, uh, early March or late February of this year. And I had put in an order with our machine shop for 10 units. And at the outset, <laughs> I sold about 35 or 40 of them. So we missed the mark on that one. Um, and it took us a while to catch up with the orders at first. And, um, you know, there was a few months there where we were pretty much back ordered as we just tried to keep up with the orders. And, uh, but now I think we have some data to go off of and we can better estimate what we need to order and when we need to order it. And we've also kind of refined our production process, both with the machine shop and our assembly here. And it's, uh, it's gotten a lot more, um, streamlined. So we're, we're doing a little better there. So do you have any idea how many of your antennas are out in the world being used at this point? If I had to make a rough estimate, I don't have the most recent sales numbers from DX engineering, but I think the last time I checked, there's probably a couple hundred out there now, um, 
between a hundred, uh, between 125 and 200, somewhere in there. Now, that's a big range, but, uh, <laughs> it's just an estimate. Well, and that goes to my next question with that, that number of antennas out in the world, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of feedback and, you know, look, going back to the prototypes, I know you had excellent feedback back then, but what are you hearing for feedback now? Yeah, so I get emails uh, pretty regularly from customers that are sending me their parks on the air activation or, you know, whatever they might be doing with it. Mostly people are doing parks on the air. Um, But I've had several people reach out and say, hey, I just, you know, I got this this weekend and I've used it for the first time. And man, this thing is so awesome. You know, it's built like a tank and all this stuff. And here's my setup, you know, um, and I get a picture of it. And, uh, some, sometimes it'll actually surprise me how they're using it. And, and it's really creative. Um, some people don't buy the kit because they kind of have their own idea of how they want to deploy it. So they'll buy just the coil or the coil and a couple accessories. But, um, one in particular that was really interesting was a lady, who sent me the picture, uh, she's in a wheelchair, so she has hard time deploying radials for obvious reasons, uh, rolling over them all the time and stuff like that. So her and her husband created this steel plate that they deployed it on and they used a, a, a mag mount and they stuck it down on that plate and that acted as the, the uh, ground plane for it. So you never know what you're going to see. And, and she was really thrilled with it. And I think they made a almost 200 contacts that day when they did their POTA activation. So they were thrilled and I was really happy to see that, you know, this equipment gets out there and it's, you know, it's, it's allowing people to have fun. So that's, that's really the, the cool thing to see is, is people enjoying it. That's the whole point of what I'm doing is, is enabling people to better enjoy the hobby. Absolutely. Is it too early to think about what the next step might be as far as production? Uh, not the production of the existing materials, but are you getting any feedback on on improvements that people are asking for or additional products in the future? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we get ideas all the time, and I think um, a lot of them are good ideas, and it's stuff that we're looking at incorporating into the design at some point. Um, you know, we got to wait for the right time to do that, and. Uh, but we have a list going of things that we can improve because nothing is ever done. You can always improve it. So uh, that's something that we take to heart and we'll, we'll find the most common um, improvement suggestions and kind of look at those and say, okay, this is coming up more than once. You know, this is probably something that's pretty important. Let's put that down on, on the list. So we do that. And then I am developing several new products right now that uh, are in the very early stages of development. So I can't talk too much about it, but uh, there will be some stuff coming soon. Can you hint at what that might be just in broad terms? Uh, more antennas. <laughs> that's, that's pretty broad. That's pretty broad. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that we are looking at um, wire antennas, you know, a more traditional wire antenna, and then also um, looking at some new vertical products as well. So um, I know that doesn't narrow it down much more than antennas, but it's better than than that. And when we talked before, you're pretty much a one-man show. Are you still, or have you brought some additional help in? I do have help now. Um, there's a lot of great hams in my area, and, you know, I knew these people before I started, and they're They've been very interested in it, and so I've been getting help from them. And um, you know, they come when I need them, and basically act as as subcontractors for me. So we're we're getting it done that way. Um, you know, who knows what happens? But you know, if we grow more and more, we might have a permanent crew. So we'll see. And what about yourself? Are you able to get out and operate much at all? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I have been keeping up with my operating, uh, it's gone down a little bit, you know, when we were really busy, but, um, we're getting a little bit more breathing room now that we've caught up. So, uh, yeah, I went and did a parks on the air activation last weekend, went out to, uh, San Jacinto battleground state park and did about 70 contacts there in, I don't know, 
uh, maybe an hour or two. So that was a lot of fun. That was me and another friend. We did a, a two operator activation. And then uh, coming up uh, this week, I'm going out to the uh, RV radio network rally. So it's a group of RVers that are also ham radio operators. And they have a, a 40 meter net every night. I believe it's at 7 p.m. Central. Um, and they do a rally twice a year, one in the spring, one in the fall. And so, uh, actually it was one of my customers, uh, Tim, he, uh, emailed me and said, Hey, you know, I'm working on running, uh, this, this rally. I'm one of the people that's helping out. And would you like to come out and, and give a quick presentation? So I'm going out to do that, but I also plan to activate a few parks while I'm out that way. Uh, over there in Fredericksburg, Texas. So that'll be a lot of fun. So that raises the question, what do you have planned for 2024? Will you be at any of the big conventions, uh, Visalia or Dayton or Hamcation? Yeah, I think the plan is to be at Dayton for sure. I haven't really squared all that away yet, but um, that is the the one that I've got my eye on, I think, because so many people asked me if I was going to be there last year and I wasn't able to make it. So now that I've got some time to plan and um, I'm not just starting out, it'll be a lot easier to get there. And uh, I am probably going to look into doing a couple more, um, but you know, hitting the road is is difficult. So we'll see what I can come up with. Well, Mike, thanks for joining me today. I've got to tell you, I'm very happy for your success, and I know there's a lot of other people out there rooting for you. You're you're a great person with a great product line. And I've always enjoyed the commitment you've made, not only the hobby, but doing this particular company right. So congratulations and thanks again for joining me. Well, I really appreciate that. And um, I really appreciate you having me on today and before as well. You know, it's always fun to come together and, and talk about the hobby and um, just uh, have a good conversation. So um, appreciate it. I've been talking to Mike Giannaccio, W5REZ, Res antennas, check them out online. Go to DX Engineering and buy your antenna. 73.